Hey guys, this is Ron. So this is video seven of our uh, Rediscovering C uh, series uh, that we're working on. And in this video, we're going to be talking about loops. So there are three primary ways that you'll carry out loops uh, or looping inside of C. You'll either do a while loop, a do while loop, or a for loop. Now, uh, while and for are the more common ways of doing loops, but you may see do while from time to time. Um, but like I said, while and for are much more common. Um, and so do while sometimes isn't even implemented in certain languages, but it is implemented in C. The way I like to think of while and do while, um, I would use a while loop uh, if I'm going to loop uh, zero or more times, meaning that I'm first going to evaluate whether or not I need to loop, um, and then I may or may not you know, do that depending upon you know, um, that test. Um, but I don't potentially know exactly how many times I'm going to loop. Um, and so uh, we're going to continually evaluate some criteria that will determine whether we should keep looping, right? So this is zero to n times uh, looping. Where the do while kind of comes in handy uh, is when I at least want to loop one time. Um, and so it's going to loop uh, one or more times, so one to n. Um, and so typically, like I said, while loops are more common. Uh, and you can rewrite a do while loop as just a while loop. Um, and so, you know, you may or may not uh, uh, find it, you know, handy, uh, but uh, we'll talk about it a little bit and we'll show you some code. The for loop is pretty common. Uh, so for loops uh, are nice because um, if you are going to use some type of counter uh, in your loops, you can, it's very easy to implement, you know, for loops are set up that way, um, which means that if I'm going to uh, use some type of index value, for loops become super handy. And so we'll, we'll walk through an example of using a, a for loop. So for loops additionally, um, because of the whole indexing piece or uh, because of the counter, it may be, you know, it might be that I know exactly how many times I want it to loop. Um, and so uh, for loops, you know, are handy because it's easy to kind of set that up, you know, at the top of the loop. There are two keywords that we'll talk about uh, later on as we've kind of gone through our while, do while, and for uh, examples. Uh, those keywords are continue and break. So we've already seen break previously uh, when we broke out of our switch statement. Um, in this case, break uh, breaks you out of whatever um, loop that you're currently in, right? So you can have nested loops. So I can have a while loop inside of a while loop. Um, and so break will break me out of whichever um, loop construct I'm currently in. Continue, on the other hand, will basically jump back to the top of the loop and begin the next iteration of the loop. Um, so in the case of like uh, my for loop, where I'm going to have some type of counter or index value, uh, it'll go ahead and increment that counter um, and begin the next loop, right? And so uh, maybe there's some condition I'm going to check and if that check is you know, true or whatever, um, that signals to me that I don't need to do you know, the rest of the steps inside of that loop. And so I just begin a new loop by using the continue keyword. Um, and so I haven't really thought of an example yet. Um, so maybe I'll you know, go off the cuff on that one um, you know, just so that you can kind of you know, see um, that in action. So let's jump in and do our while loop first. Um, so that is a pretty easy one. Um, let's see. 
let's do uh, an example where um, we're essentially going to sit down at a table and we're going to throw some bets um, and we can't get up off of the table until we're out of money, right? So not a very good betting game, but it'll show you, you know, the while loop. So BI, uh, we're going to call this uh, bets.c. Why not? Um, we'll go ahead and include our stdio.h so that we can print out things but we're also gonna need uh, to include standardlib.h and the reason we need that if I come over to this tab <clears throat> uh, we're gonna go ahead and implement some randomness in um, our betting game and so we're gonna need um, random okay so random is gonna, it's a random number generator uh, that we can use. Uh, I would not suggest um, you implement it the way I'm about to implement it, um, but it, it will work for our example. So the first thing we have to do um, is do S random, and this basically, you know, uh, seeds our random number generator, um, and then we'll start to call random. So our random, to seed it, we need some uh, integer that we're gonna put in there and I'll just seed mine with time. Um, so if I, uh, well, here's where it said that we needed to include standard lib.h, so that's too easy. Um, we also have, well, that's the actual two time. And so we're gonna use time in order to uh, generate this time t thing. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about this piece. Obviously, the point was to get uh, a while loop example, but I figured just a real boring while loop uh, would, uh, would be a little too boring, so why not? So we're gonna go ahead and include time.h as well. Pound include time.h. And then we'll jump into our main function. We're not gonna pass anything in. All right. So let's go ahead and say uh, we have a few coins. Uh, we'll say we start with 50 coins. Uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have to figure out what the random number is that it generates. We'll call this the chance, and then we're gonna go ahead and get our time. So this was time underscore t. Uh, we'll just call it t. And I'm gonna pass null in. So if I look over here for time, um, it needs, let's see, time returns the time in seconds past epoch. If t lock is non-null, the return value is also stored in the memory. Okay, either way, we're just gonna pass in null and not worry about this. Um, so we should just get a time object back, uh, which under the hood I think is just a long int. Um, and so we'll be able to seed our random number generator, s random with just t. All right, so random number generator is really uh, grossly uh, set up, but it will work for our thing. And so first I'm gonna start with while. And now I need to have some sort of condition um, that will determine um, what happened or how, many times I'm basically gonna loop right and right now I don't know um, because we're just gonna you know randomly decide if we win or lose right so we'll say if our coins is greater than um, let's say we're gonna have some type of bet here so we'll do a pound define and we'll say a bet is five coins all right, let's say as long as we have, uh, this is essentially saying as long as our coins are greater than or equal to whatever we have to use to bet, we're gonna go ahead and bet, right? Because we can't play the game if we don't have enough money to place a bet, all right? And so we'll do something like this, chance, equals random 
to do mod 100. So essentially this is gonna generate this really big number, rand max or something like that. And we're just gonna drop it down uh, by running a modulus on it. So it's gonna generate numbers from like zero to 99, right? Something like that. And so we'll say if uh, chance is greater than 75, we're gonna say you've won. So we'll do our coins plus equals our bet. So we've increased our number of coins and we'll just say print F, you win. Congratulations. But you can't leave the table because uh, we're not gonna let you leave the table obviously until you're broke, all right? So this is definitely in the dealer's favor. You lose. Too bad. So sad. Alright. And we have the bottom of our while loop. And then we'll just return zero because our program ran. And we'll call that a we'll call that a day. So let's see. We have our while loop and we have our condition here at the very front. So this has to evaluate as true before any of this inside the while loop will execute. We'll get to the bottom here and we'll come right back up and we'll check this condition again. If coins is still greater than or equal to bet, we're gonna go ahead and execute what's on the inside of this loop again. And we'll do this until this becomes false and then we exit out of our while loop, right? So pretty easy setup there. Uh, we'll do a make bet. Bets, not best. And we won, or we lost, then we won, then we lost, 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 then we won, right? And so this is, you know, we could get lucky and it could win a bunch of times, which means we're gonna lose a whole lot more time uh, than we did there. Or, you know, we may, you know, lose every time, which is fine. And then we wouldn't loop as many times. So what we're seeing is that it's gonna, you know, randomly win or lose and then dependent upon that it's just going to keep going until the point where you're broke right so that is a while loop right so pretty simple the condition is right at the beginning and that determines whether or not we uh, execute what's on the inside of here right so let's quit out of that so that is our while loop uh, it's going to go zero or more times. So had we set our uh, coin amount to four, we never would have played the game, right? And we can validate that. Bi uh, bet, or not bests, we did it again. Bi bet dot c. And if we change our number of coins to let's say four, and we'll make bets dot c. Uh, make bets, not bets.c. Notice we didn't play the game at all there, right? Because we're checking that at the very beginning of the loop. So let me go back up and change that to what it was so that when I push it to GitHub, you can see the loop in action. All right. All right. So let's try our do while loop. So in our do while loop, um, we're just gonna prompt a user um, for you know some type of value, right? And if they don't enter a specific value, we're gonna prompt them again, right? So let's call this um, choice.c. And we'll pound include stdio.h. In main we won't pass anything in and here we're going to uh, define a choice right so char choice and we'll do do and while choice is not equal to a uh, and we'll say and choices not equal to B. 
right? So notice here that I have a do portion at the very beginning and my while portion at the bottom is what actually evaluates whether I should continue looping, which means anything I put inside these brackets is at least going to be executed once, all right? We can do a print F and we'll say, uh, what is your choice? And we'll say it's A or B. And we'll close that off. And we'll use just, we'll keep it simple. And there's this thing called get char. Get char, so we'll have to include stdio.h, which we did. Um, and get char is going to return an integer, which is just the character um, that uh, the user pressed. So get char is equivalent to get c uh, with standard n. So get c uh, is equivalent to f get c, except that it may be implemented as a macro, blah, blah, blah. The point is, is get char is going to pull from standard in, which is the terminal in our case, um, and it's going to grab a character. Now, standard in is a buffered interface, so although this will work, it'll be a little bit hokey in that, you know, when the user presses A, they're going to hit enter, and so we'll, it'll first pass in A. And then if that works, it'll jump out of this loop. But it, let's say they were to hit C. Well, that's not a valid choice. It's going to jump back up to the top, present them again. But get char is going to grab the next thing in line, which was the new line or carriage return from them hitting the enter key. So you'll see it's a little bit hokey, but it'll get the point across that this do is at least going to execute this one time. Um, but if this uh evaluates is true it's going to keep looping right and so we'll say our choice is equal to get char and we'll return zero because our program ran fine we'll close that out and write okay so we have our do it checks at the end so we know this will at least execute one time what did I call this? I called this choice. So we'll call this make choice. It prompts me for A or B. If I hit A, it works. So it, it broke out of uh, our loop. Well, you know, it, it stopped iterating across our loop because it got something. Well, what happens if I hit C? So this first one is the fact that uh, you know, C was not correct, so it jumped through again, um, but then it also looped for the new line character, the enter character that I had. Um, I can kind of get around that by hitting C and hitting Control D, because that sends an end of file, um, and so there's nothing to follow it, you know, like the new line character, but, but essentially what they're doing is hitting, you know, what you want them to do, hit enter, and you break out, right? And so that's kind of, you know, what we wanted. We wanted this to be executed at least one time. And if the user entered an A or a B, uh, that means this is no longer true because we're checking if it's not equal to. Uh, so this is no longer true and it jumps out. And we could have had something obviously uh, down here other than just our return. But the point was is do while, um, you know, does the same construct uh, as a while loop, except it doesn't check until the end, so you know you're gonna execute at least one time. Now most of the time, uh, you can orient this so that it can just use a while loop, which means maybe you have to print out uh, beforehand and then reprint inside the uh, loop. Um, but if this is the functionality you're going for, you know, do while is there for you to use. All right, so we have our for loop uh, now, and our for loop uh, might be that, you know, we're gonna use some type of counter, we're gonna use some type of index value, uh, something like that. And so it makes sense 
instead of having to remember, okay, on at the bottom of this loop, I need to increment the counter, I need to do these other things. Instead, the for loop just kind of takes care of that for us. And so in this example, we'll just uh, read in some of our command line arguments. So we'll call this uh, cli.c. We'll do a pound include for our uh, stdo.h in main. And this time we're actually gonna pass in some arguments. So typically you'll see something like this, int arg c uh, char star star arg v. Now, you might see uh, some programmers, instead of doing char star star arg v, they'll do char star arg v um, with square brackets so that you know this is a pointer uh, into you know a, an array uh, or an array of pointers is, is probably you know makes more sense. Uh, I have a habit of just doing char star star arg v. It works the same in this uh, case. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, the point is, is we want to iterate across uh, all of the command line arguments that are sent. So we can just do it right here. So if we do a four, inside here, there are a couple of different things that we're gonna have to do. This first portion is where we're going to basically initialize some type of counter. So in our case, We'll do, we'll just call it int i. So this is going to be some type of index value. And we can set it to an initial value. Now in my case, I'm just going to set it to zero so that you can see uh, how this argv thing really works. Now this argc thing that I've named, this is the number of command line arguments that were passed in, mostly. It also includes the fact that the first argument of argv is the name of our program that is executing. So if I do, I want my i to be less than argc. This means that I'll start at zero and go all the way up to the point of uh, the, the last you know, argument here, right? And because these are zero indexed, it's, it's gonna be fine, right? So in this last piece, uh, it gives you an opportunity to go ahead and increment your counter, right? So in our case, we're using i as an index value. Um, and so after every iteration, it automatically increments i for us. And we don't have to remember then at the bottom of our loop to go ahead and increment i, right? All right. So inside our loop, we'll just do a printf and we'll just do percent %s slash n. So we're taking in a string and also putting a, a return after it. And we'll do argv index value i, right? So what this is going to do is loop across here, uh, printing out each of the strings uh, that argv points to. All right, and then we'll return zero because our program ran. All right, let's go ahead and make CLI. And if I run it by itself, it just prints out the name of the program because that's the only argument that argv has. But I can also do test one, test two, test three, and notice I get CLI, the name of the program, test one, test two, test three, right? And that's because, again, argc is the number of arguments. And so we're gonna go from zero all the way up to uh, argc, but I won't go, uh, once it gets to the value of argc, this is no longer true, because you know, uh, I at that point would not be less than argc, it would be equal uh, to argc, and so it stops uh, the loop, right? And we just execute from uh, the bottom off. All right, and so we're able to use that to iterate across argv, right? So for loops are really handy for that kind of thing because I know I'm gonna be using some type of index value or I wanna keep track of some kind of counter 
um, and so super uh, helpful for that. So just remember this beginning portion is where you kind of initialize uh, whatever variable, um, whatever counter that you're going to use. Here is our test condition to uh, our conditional that's going to say whether or not we should loop. And then here is where we're going to increment, you know, maybe our counter or, you know, whatever, right? So pretty, pretty easy once you get used to it and you'll see for loops in you know, lots of different languages. All right. So there we've covered uh, our while loop, our do while loop and our for loop. So let's look at our continue and our break. Uh, so let's see, this one is kind of off the cuff. We'll call this um, we'll just call it cont.c and we'll just do like a for loop or something like that. So we'll do uh, pound include stdo.h and main, we're not gonna pass anything in. And we'll just say for um, in i equals zero, i should be less than 10, i plus plus. So we're gonna increment right there. Um, and we'll do something like this. If i percent two is equal to zero, We'll go ahead and continue. Otherwise, we're just going to print f uh, percent d, and we'll just put i here. So what we should see is a counter that just prints out, except for the fact that whenever um, i is an even number, because I percent two, if it's an even number, it's gonna result in a zero. So if it comes out with zero, it's gonna continue. So all we should hopefully see, if this works correctly, is our odd numbers, because our even numbers are gonna continue and they're just gonna jump right back up to the top to the next loop, all right? So let's try that. What did we call this? C-O-N-T, so make C-O-N-T. And it did work, right? So we see just our odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, nine, right? So that is the use of continue. So it automatically just jumps to the top and begins the next loop. So in our case, beginning the next loop means that we increment I and then start again, all right? So now let's take a look at break. So we've already seen this. Uh, with our um, with our switch statement, but we'll go ahead and put a break in here. So let's say this is not 10, it is 20. And we'll say something like this. Uh, do we want it at the beginning or the end? It probably doesn't matter. We'll do, we'll do it here anyway. So if, um, i is greater than 10 break and so what we should see is something fairly similar to you know what we had before uh, so even though we uh, increase this to 20 as soon as we get to the point where i is greater than 10 it's going to break out of our for loop all right so let's make that again and in fact, we see the exact same thing, right? And that's because as soon as it got to 10, it broke out of our for loop, right? So too easy. Um, that's pretty much it for loops. Um, like I said, whiles you'll see all the time. I guess I can cover one more thing. So let me throw this in there. There's another thing um, that you'll see um, all the time and if my brain would stop being fuzzy um, we'll call this infinite loops so a loop that never stops we'll go with that 
pretty generic uh, description, uh, but essentially we can make a loop that will continuously loop. So uh, we'll call this forever or. And so in this case, we'll do a for loop that loops forever. So pound include co.h and main. And in our case, um, we're just not gonna care. We're just gonna do something like that, right? So this is gonna be an infinite for loop. There are no conditions that tell this thing when to stop. Now we could still do in i equals zero. We could do i plus plus, and we could do print f um, percent d, and we'll do i. Let's do our return zero, even though we'll never get down here. All right. And so what this is going to do, because there is no condition in here that says when it should stop, it's going to go forever. And now, again, I didn't have to put this in there either, but this at least uh, gives us the opportunity to see that, yes, I'm still looping, right? And so it will loop forever. Uh, so what did I call that thing again? I called it forever four. So make forever four. Oop. How about a lowercase f? Forever four, and I'll hit control C to stop it. But essentially, uh, we got up to 222,158, right? So it's just gonna continue to go because there's nothing to tell it to stop until I forced it to stop by hitting control C on my keyboard. All right, so that's one way um, that we can do a, uh, uh, infinite loop. We can also do them with while. Um, so if I do a vi for our ever while on, h main, we're not gonna send anything, and we'll just do while. You could really put any condition in here that's always gonna be true. So in my case, I'm just gonna do while one. Um, print f. Hello. So we have a very friendly while loop. All right. So we'll never get down to that uh, return. And so what we should just see is a flood of hellos. So make forever. Let's do a make clean first. And we'll do a make forever while.c. Or wow. And I'll hit control C, all right? So it's just gonna continue to flood our screen with the same thing because it's never, uh, this will never be false, right? And so it will continue to do that. Now, why would you wanna do this? Well, um, there could be a number of reasons why you do it. Maybe you're prompting the user for, like in our last example, they need to hit A or B, right? And so you're gonna continue to loop forever until the point where you actually get an A or a B from them and then you'll break. Um, you could do something like that. Um, this could be your main game loop, right? And so you want the game to go on forever until you know they decide to quit, and then you could break out of that loop. You know, whatever it is, you'll you'll end up finding that uh, you know from time to time you'll use uh, an infinite loop. And so now you know how to do that with while, um, and you also know how to do that with for. And now you could do the same with do while, but you typically uh, don't see that. You'll see that written up as a while loop, or you'll see that written up as a for loop. So hope this was a little bit informative for you. Uh, sorry for it going so long, but uh, we did cover three different ways of implementing loops, with while and for being the most common. We also covered uh, the use of continue and break, continue where it jumps to the top of your loop and begins the next iteration of the loop. Uh, whereas break breaks you out of whatever containing um, loop construct you're in. So if you are in, uh, if you have a nested loop where you have a while inside of a, another while loop or a while inside of a for loop, 
wherever that break is, you're just going to break out of that containing kind of loop. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.